channel and welcome to another video where today we can look at a uh, super conspiracy fail at clouds which i guess this should be fun uh, for those of you who don't know me hi i'm olaf i'm currently doing my masters in physics and in astronomy and i'm one email away <laughs> from fixing the date for my uh, astronomy for the final uh, exam um, we call it the master's exam after which you will have the uh, the title of a, a master in science and I'm very excited for that but the bureaucracy is slowly killing me all right <laughs> let's get to the video hello everyone hello a big thanks to the engineer who goes by the YouTube name Rakia 7549 who created this cinema 4d animation that I've shown before that shows us that if we indeed lived on a globe there would have to be an upward earth bold shadow occurring at both sunrise and that they were actually not because it's not one one wavelength of light it's multiple i will explain that in my trusty slides in just a bit i'll watch the video first and talk a little bit about it and then i go into the presentation and show what my issues are with that but already here it's wrong uh, because the, the the light that the sun emits is not just of one wavelength of one color it's of many wavelengths as we know uh, and uh, the refraction is is light wave dependent it's chromatic that means that that it, it behaves different at different uh, wavelengths that's why in the evening and in the morning it's a little bit red or orange-ish and sunset as the sun allegedly drops at an angle lower than the horizon it it, it does you can see that the, the sun sets and the fact that the sun moves uniformly over a given amount of time uh, is very indicative that it goes on like that and goes below the horizon because actually flat earth has never been able to explain the sun setting because there is no upward earth bold shadow there is no sun angled lower than the horizon and therefore no globe it's a it's a typical case of let's wrongly apply what we think is the globe model and then from that conclude that the globe model is wrong because we've applied it wrongly that's that that's a very very strong case of that that is one of the biggest globe killers, in my opinion. Yes, the taboo conspiracy seal of flat earth approval is, is always a, a seal of quality for us. <laughs> that same engineer sent me this awesome video that you're seeing, filmed by someone else that was posted on TikTok. Let's watch the whole video unedited before I comment. You'll check this out. Like this cloud that the sun is hiding behind has broke through looks like a spotlight and then it carries over it's very cool actually all the way over to here exactly uh, my aunt actually showed me a picture similar to this where unfortunately you couldn't see the original cloud because it was hidden behind behind a, a little hill that more or less had the same effect a couple of months ago uh, and i explained to her that well that this is a cloud that that is lit from slightly below that's casting a shadow upwards on the rest of the of the slight clouds that you can or cannot see here is that not the coolest thing it's very cool it's like i'm under a giant canopy <laughs> first this video proves to any reasonable thinking person that this globe propagandist and all of his globe loving ilk who said that these Mount Rainier photos are upward shadows of Mount Rainier? They, they, they are. You can clearly see that the uh, the clouds are higher than the mountain, by the way. But uh, yeah. Cast by a sun lower than the horizon, proving the globe are all 100% wrong. And uh, and I love how he comes to the conclusion without doing any analysis of the of the <laughs> of the video. This is typical flat Earth here. And I will go talk about why he's totally wrong in my presentation. It's a stupid argument. It's, it's, it's not really, particularly here. Can you see how, because his argument later in the video, because it's only like a four minute video, I watched it uh, beforehand for a change. <laughs> and and uh, actually his argument right now will be that no, it's the top of the mountain casting a shadow down on the top of the clouds, which don't get me wrong, that that's a thing that, that happens in nature. But do you see how the top of the mountain doesn't touch the clouds. <laughs> I love how he shows this image. So he clearly knows that this exists, but he, he doesn't take it as evidence because why would he? 
<laughs> we flat earthers, especially pea brain, argued that these mountain shadows are caused by the top. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I must refrain from making the very obvious joke here. Of the mountain, casting a shadow on the clouds lower than the mountain peak, but as a matter of perspective, when filmed from a lower vantage point. That that's not how that works. Particularly in this case, explain to me with geometry and and maybe like a little drawing or something how the top of that mountain, if it casts a shadow downwards on top of the clouds that are lower than the top of the mountain, is disconnected from the shadow. I would love to hear that. C completely ridiculous. You maybe maybe before you go out making claims, you could actually think about the claims that you're making. Just a, uh, uh, I know that's a very extraordinary idea for a flat earther, but I would uh, encourage it no less. It creates the illusion of a shape of the mountain being cast upward in the sky. Turns out, we flat earthers were 100% correct. No. We flat earthers already pointed out the fact that because there is no video of an alleged upward mountain shadow filmed from the apex of a mountain. That's, that's, that's like the whole thing. There is no video of it or like picture, so it can't be real. Under no circumstances can anything that hasn't been filmed real. That's, that's the process that goes on in the Flat Earthers head. Now, whilst I would be interested in seeing such a, uh, a video or an image, the fact that it doesn't exist doesn't mean that, uh, that the uh, uh, mountains don't throw shadows from below on, 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 on the clouds, on the underside of clouds. That it proved that these photos are a matter of perspective from a low... And I'm not saying that all of these images cast the shadow down on, 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 on the bottom of the cloud, but most of them are, in my opinion. Vantage point. Unfortunately, our globe-loving friends, especially this one, all willfully refuse to see the truth. But <laughs> getting a globe propagandist to admit he's wrong... Why, why does this video cut here? ...willfully refuse to see the truth. That, that, that said, if you if you waited for a little longer, you would have seen that the sun came from below the top of the mountain, a globe which is impossible to flat earth, by the way. Gandas to admit he's wrong is seemingly an impossible task. Now, and I will challenge that. To be conspiracy, after my presentation, I think I will present ample evidence that what you're saying in this video is wrong, and I would love to hear a retraction from you. But this cloud video, again, ends the Mount Rainier upward shadow argument. Which, that does it without question, the cloud shadow in the sky creates the same triangular-shaped shadow that Mount Rainier. I agree, it's the same shadow. Uh, what I find so funny is that he has presented no, not a single piece of evidence as to why this cloud couldn't also be lit from below. None. He doesn't even think about it because he doesn't, as most flood earthers do, he doesn't follow the evidence to come to a conclusion. He already has the conclusion that this doesn't work on a globe Earth and thus presents his evidence in that way. Near created, proving that the triangular shadow has no relation to the actual shape of the cloud. It's all very wrong. A matter of perspective filmed from a lower vantage point. Like the cloud shadow, these shadows from Mount Rainier likewise have no relation to the triangular shape of the mountain. Of course, I can't stop the globe propagandists from closing their eyes and repeating their same stupid arguments again. And I can't stop the uh, flat earth proponents from uh, just not thinking about things. I'm, I'm trying so sometimes, <laughs> but, but uh, on average, I don't think I can change much in that regard. But let's get to my next point. Like anti-crepuscular rays, this cloud shadow again proves how perspective affects our vision of the sky and how star rotations and counter rotations work based on perspective only. It has nothing to do with rotation. I'll have a link to P Brain's video on the topic in the description. One last thing, this cloud shadow that extends across the entire sky should be impossible on a globe. How so? How can I make that claim? If we lived on a globe, the shadow starting from the horizon would end roughly halfway over the sky on the globe. Why? Why would it do that? As the shadow angle would start to be pointed towards space. And that doesn't change anything. You see, the whole thing is throwing a shadow, not not just the top. Actually, it would be impossible on a flat Earth if it was lit from above, because there the shadow would eventually stop hitting the clouds. I will show that also in my presentation. As the Earth curves away from the shadow. That what? No. What? How do you think shadows work? Shadows just don't magically stop. It's it, it's the shadow of the whole thing. I will have to explain all of that. A cloud shadow could never extend more than halfway across the sky on a globe. I would love to see your maths or your 
geometric interpretation of that statement. Please show it to me. With that, is my argument right? No. And with that, we'll go over to my presentation. All right, here we are in presentation. Let's talk about clouds and shadows. Uh, first, let's talk about the bulge shadow that he mentioned in the very beginning of his video, um, which is complete crap. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> Refraction is wavelength dependent, so there would not be a uniform Earth bulge shadow because the way that the light interacts with the atmosphere would make it slowly, li pardon me, slowly light up. Um, this means that you, you you would kind of experience a gradual change from longer wavelength colors like red and orange and the one to slowly going over to blue to the, uh, a blue sky, which. Coincidentally, is precisely what we see when, when, especially when there are clouds up in the morning or in the evening, you see the clouds as a uh, orangish red or something along those lines. Sometimes a little yellow, uh, which completely agrees with the Glow model. Big bloody surprise! I have never seen an explanation for this on a flat Earth, by the way. Okay, let's come over to the problem, which obviously not to scale here. Duh, the <laughs> mountain that big would be wild. So the clouds would be somewhere here. If the Earth was a globe, um, the sunlight, uh, the sunlight would, would, would if, if we stand here, right, right, right in the middle of the of the uh, uh, upright kind of, if you wish, from this perspective, um, the sunlight would hit from below, would hit the mount from below, and the uh, the shadows would be cast uh, from the whole thing that is blocking it. So not only would the top part throw a shadow, but also the lower part would throw a shadow. Thus, the shadow would kind of extend to pretty much as far as the eye can see. The issue here is obviously that this is not to scale. Uh, now, the Earth's curvature is, is far more nuanced and, 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 and a lot, a, a lot, a lot weaker than that. So essentially, what you have is is uh, you can imagine it as a as a slight, 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 slight curvature with a slight layer of cloud above it, a couple of kilometers above it. And, and because it is hit downwards, the, as far as you can see, the shadow will extend and, and eventually the, the shadow will stop because the, the uh, clouds will be outside of the, of the range that the shadow is throwing there. But this will be in the night side, so obviously you don't see the shadow there, right? Okay, cool. Now that we got that covered, let's talk about the flat earth things. Uh, it's a lot easier. Um, you have the, the ground here and the shadow cast on top of the clouds. Now the issue here is, imagine if, if the cloud was here, right? If the cloud was here, you would look up at that and you wouldn't see the shadow anymore because the, the shadow just doesn't hit the cloud anymore. So on flat Earth, the shadow would necessarily have to stop unless the whatever creates the shadow is lit from beneath. So if the sun was lower, like that. Now, unfortunately, since the flat Earth doesn't give exact figures on how high the sun is, this is all a little bit speculation. Um, but I'll show you something that we don't necessarily need to to uh, be this interpretative of, of, of what the flat Earth position is, because I will show now that this cloud is in fact lighting the the the, the clouds that we saw in the video from below. Clouds, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> now, I'm not a meteorologist. I'm a physicist and I'm an astronomer, although I did take a course on atmospheric science in, in, uh, on, and aerosol physics in my master's in, in, in physics. And we did, of course, talk about clouds because there is a lot of physics involved with clouds, obviously. And with that, I tried to identify the uh, clouds that we saw in the video. And I came to the conclusion that the big cloud is a cumulus cloud and the other cloud is an alto stratus cloud. I, I will leave a link to the cloud identification algorithm that I used for that in the video description. And I also just encourage you to Google these two cloud names. They, they all look uh, more or less different. And, and, and I'm very certain that the first one is a cumulus cloud. There is no sh uh, doubt about that. Um, I'm not 100% certain that the other one is an alto stratus. However, it is when I Google it the best fitting one and the only other ones would be even higher. So let's talk about it. I'm convinced that this one is a cumulus cloud. Again, the cloud identification chart that I used is in the video description. It's from the uh, World Meteorology Association thing. I don't know the exact name, something like that. 
and I identified the other ones as alpha stratus, right? Uh, so those are higher. The only other thing that it could be where it would be lower are stratus clouds, and stratus clouds look completely different than what these look. It could be stratocumulus, but they are not fluffy enough. They, they don't have clear rounded uh, uh, things, which is what uh, alto cumulus usually have. So in my opinion, those are alto stratus clouds. I'm free to be uh, proved wrong here by someone who knows more about clouds, but as far as I'm concerned, these are alto stratus. Now, as you see in this image, cumulus clouds are way lower than alto stratus clouds. Which means that the only way for this to for the for this cumulus cloud to throw a shadow on the alto stratus clouds is if it's lit from below. So no downward shadow in this video. I would like to thank the book conspiracy for providing us with another proof that the sun is actually below the horizon. And with that, I will see you in the next video. If you enjoyed this little analysis that I did, uh, maybe consider leaving a like. If you enjoyed it a lot, maybe consider consider subscribing, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye!